everyone, welcome to Studio Sunday. We hope you're loving this spring weather and getting outside and soaking up some sun. Yeah. It's been a crazy week here in the studio though. Yeah. So here we go, are you ready? Yes. Okay, we hope all of you had uh, have your calendars marked for next weekend. We know we do. Oh. Because it's Terry Moore Live. Big. <laughs> <laughs> it um. starts Friday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. And that, that's when the art sale goes live. About 150 new pages of, uh, wow. of page art. art. And you're going to be between 75 and 100 sketches, you think? Um, I think I will hit 75. How many more than that I can do? I don't know. I, got, I had a really good day yesterday and got six done. So if I have more good days here... Have a good day. I'll have a good day. I'll okay. try to have a good day. Okay, and then all weekend, you'll be doing live panels on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook, right? Mm-hmm. I'm posting the schedule. Ending with Studio Sunday live next Sunday. Right here, and we turn the camera, and there's Robin. <sighs> well, we're not sure about that yet. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot back out. Yeah. Okay, it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, we'll have a good time. Yeah. We have to see everyone there. Don't miss this because Terry will be announcing his next project during Studio Sunday Live. Oh, I didn't know that. That's exciting. <laughs> you, you, you better get busy and come up with I something. I gotta think of one. Actually, no, I'm joking. I, we have, we've already... Don't say we. Yeah. <laughs> Don't drag me yeah, into this. I'm, I'm all in. I'm all in on the next project and we can tell you what it is. Okay, drum roll please. The Serial Omnibus shipped from the printer on Friday. Oh. After three different delays, there was a COVID spike where they shut down the plant. There was a paper shortage. And then they had, after that COVID um, spike, they had a lot of employees that never came back. Oh, so it was just chaos over there for a while. Oh. And anyway, we haven't seen the book yet, so who knows what it looks like. <laughs> Anyway, we're preparing in the warehouse so we can get these right out to you guys. There are bu boxes and bubble wrap everywhere. Yeah. I mean, it is ridiculous. We have book supplies everywhere. We expect the books in a week or so, and then we'll get them right out. If you miss the Abstract Studio version, retailers will have the hardcover and the softcover in stores in mid-April. Okay. I don't have an exact Wednesday yet, but it'll be mid-April. And that's not an April Fool's joke. That's no. real. If you have moved since you placed your pre-order in December, please give us a, a shout out so that we can uh, change your address. Or whoever lives in your old home will be enjoying Zoe and all of her adventures. <laughs> I like that. Maybe we'll get some new readers. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I'll, I'll take them however we get them. Anyway, I'm just saying these books are limited to six fifty, so and we sold six fifty, so there's no replacing it if it goes to your old address and doesn't come back to us. Be careful. Yes. So be sure to get those new addresses in to me. Also, just a reminder that we will be releasing a 2022 sketchbook in June. Once we get the serial uh, books out, we'll uh, talk about that a little bit more. One crazy book one, at a time. Uh, one at a time, but boy, do I have enough sketches. Hopefully, um, this this will, will stay on schedule and go much easier. It's going to be out in June, we hope. So okay. that's where we are with that. Okay. Uh, in convention news, we'll be at South Carolina Comic Con April 9th and 10th. That's coming up. Yeah, I'm going out in public. And, and that's in Greenville, South Carolina, and it's a Saturday-Sunday show. This was a show that we had agreed to do in 2020, mm -hmm. and so we're making this up for them. Okay. Uh, and we hope you guys come out and see us. Mostly Terry, not me. <laughs> no, I mean, people want to see you because they don't see you enough. They see me anywhere. Oh, and you're also scheduled to do San Diego Comic Con in July and mm -hmm. Baltimore in October. Yeah. So Baltimore. that will be it for the year. We hope you guys can make one of those three shows. One of three shows in 2022. Okay, that's all my news. Do you have anything to add, Mr. Moore? No, that was all very exciting, and i got to go home and process that now. Okay. Well, <laughs> then let's get on the hot seat. Yeah, okay. These two questions. Uh, let's do our first. is from Todd Ferguson. I and he asks, has Terry ever considered, or would he consider, instead of doing serialized issues, doing a collection of short stories like Stephen King does from time to time? You know, but illustrated. One big graphic novel, but like 10 short stories in it. I'd imagine you could have a lot of fun with that. 
That would be a lot of fun. And I have been thinking about doing short stories um, in one form or another. So thank you, Todd, for kind of like poking that. I, that is on my mind. But that's not what you're doing next. No. Okay. It's not. Clearly not. <laughs> okay. Okay. So that was an easy question. Yeah, that's a good idea. Thank you, Todd. Thank you. Second question is from Michael Colin Glass. I hope I didn't butcher your name. Here's a good question. Who are who are your influences? Love and Rockets, I can see. Who else and what comics do you recommend that are defining? Um Actually, there's a Love and Rockets story. You never read Love and Rockets. Right. I, I, I've never really read it or followed it. Um, it. Because Love and Rockets was out when Strangers in Paradise first started and you didn't want to look at his work or their work to um, have it bleed over into yours. So you, right. you didn't really read it. No. When I started comics, I had already tried some other forms of art. My problem with, say, for instance, when I tried to do comic strips was that I hero worshipped the, be the best cartoonists. So all of my work looked redundant. You know, it looked like I was, you could see them in my work. So when I got to comic books, I didn't look at anybody. I just stayed in my own world and did my own thing. Um, I, if I cite influences, they're going to be from comic strips like Alex Raymond, um, or like Steve Canyon, that strip, Peanuts. Um, it may be hard to see Peanuts in my work, but it's there. Uh, and I also love the classic illustrators from the magazines, um, whether it's James Montgomery Flagg or Chandler Christie, um, all those guys, Gil Elfgren. That's who influenced me. Uh, the comic strip uh, apartment uh, 3G. 3G. That was a big influence. Uh, Alex Toth uh, did cartoon strips for uh, some movies and things like that. Uh, those kind of things influenced me uh, when it came time, my turn because I just wanted to be a storyteller. So I wasn't looking at necessarily the craft of comic books. I was just thinking, okay, I'm just gonna do like a storyboard. Here's, here's my story. Here's how I board it out. Here are the key moments and the in-betweens and I'll use my old influences for my art and kind of bring my basic cartooning level up as high as I can. That was my only art goal. So why were you looking at uh, these older cartoonists On or purpose. artists instead of... Current. Yeah, when you started. I did that on purpose because the current guys are already in the market. We don't need another clone of anybody that's already made it. In, on the scene. Um, but I thought that if I would dig back to the root uh, where, you know, everybody's influenced by a string of other people before them, I thought, well, I'll just jump back a generation or so so that my influences are not so obvious, you know. So when I'm So trying you to draw were trying some, to emulate, say... Somebody who's already gone and, and not working anymore. And that keeps me from looking like Adam Hughes or Alex Jim Ross Lee. or Jim Lee. If, you know, it's it's a cruel fact, you know, if you're trying, every, everything you do is trying to look like Jim Lee, we don't need you. We already have Jim, right? So, but um, somebody from 1940, they're gone. It would be nice if somebody could still draw hands like that, you know, or whatever. So that's kind of what I did. And this is actually not uh, uncommon when you look at, say, fantasy illustrators, that, which is another world. They dig way back. You know, Maxwell Parrish and Wyeth, uh, people that were in their prime 100 years ago. And it still works, I mean, because art has very long legs, has very long life. So I thought, particularly in comic books, where um, you can, there's a new batch of look, new artists look every three years, you know, a new batch of kids comes on. Um, you have to, you have to keep your influences fresh so that you have a distinctive look. And that was my way of doing it. Okay, well, Michael, I hope that answers your questions. Yeah, that was, boy, you can tell I can rant about that. <laughs> okay, well, that's it for me. What are you drawing today? Well, today um, I'm gonna continue my uh, momentum and draw a, a new sketch and 
I've been working on these um, stuff like that and so I've really got in the flow here with my paper and the pencil and I don't know what I'm gonna draw yet let's just sit down at a blank piece of paper start from scratch see what we come up with okay so meet me here okay so I've run out of the paper that I was using which was 9 by 12 so now I'm using uh, the larger paper which is like 11 by 14 and I always bump the camera like that to get started and what I did was I took a 9 by 12 baseboard from the last sketch pad I had and I just marked off the measurements off the corner at the bottom right corner that helps me out a lot um, I'm trying to keep all these sketches at the same size, 9 by 12. So what I, what I do first is take my faithful mechanical pencil, the green one that I've had forever, and I just kind of loosely you know, mark off the face and the head and the hair that I'm going for. And I re, if you notice, I kind of key off, I, I get the head angle first and then I kind of key off the eye. And um, I'm kind of looking for something like a 7 eighths profile here where I can just see the other eyelash so it's not quite a profile. It can be tricky to draw that angle, but if you get it right, it looks cool. Because you can get that other eyelash over there and stuff like that. If you get just profiles all the time, it looks like you're just drawing the backs of a coin. <laughs> uh, so this kind of gives you a little variety. Some sort of a drop blouse line in there. And then once I get, the, I feel like I have the basic measurements correct with the mechanical and all those loose lines. And um, these days I'm using these black wing, pink, black wing pencils. Um, I found that when I was using my Faber-Castell green pencils in the um, heavier tones, like in the Bs, 4B, 6B, 3B, they were smudging really easy. And these black wing pencils are, you know, a classic pencil. They get the dark line, but they don't smudge as easy as the art pencils do. I have found them to be more forgiving. And they come in two um, weights right now. They come in this gray pencil, which is pretty darn black. And then there's a black uh, barrel pencil. So there's a gray one and a black one. And the black one is even darker, and I've been using it for hair, like, you know, brunette hair and things like that, or bold outlines. But because I'm drawing Kachu, and there's never really any blacks on Kachu unless she's wearing it, um, I'm just going to use this, you know, the lighter touch black wing pencil today. So what I'm doing here is getting the uh, uh, defi very defined outline going, um, locking in the profile lines, and then only doing a little bit of shading. Um, I'm, this is not really the pencil I'm going to use to shade with because it does uh, kind of leave a granular uh, gray tone. I'm going to switch to a lighter pencil to do the shading because the, the granules of lead on the paper are, will be finer and it will look smoother. Um, even though this Blackwing is a smooth pencil, um, it's still, if you leave, you know, make a dark spot, uh, like a black in a black box, you will still see, you know, granules of lead. And uh, that's not really what I want on this particular drawing when I do the shading. I'm using a smooth paper on purpose uh, so that I can get smoother tones, you know. Okay, pull it out of the pad so I can get start turning. And now it's time to, like, you know, pull the kneaded eraser to clean it. It cleans itself like that. And then go through and get rid of a lot of the little ghosty lines that were from the rough out. 
and it's now is when you now is when you start seeing the the drawing start to clean up and you can start seeing the potential of it that oh okay well I can you could either you know leave it like this and you're done with a quick sketch or you can do what I'm doing here um, clean it and then go back in with darker pencils and mid and lighter pencils and start doing all your tones and things like that you're either done or halfway done right at this point you can make the call depends on your time so I'm gonna keep going I'm gonna tone up this uh, t-shirt and the hair and the face that's where we're going today That pencil in my left hand is an A uh, 2B, so I'm using it to go in and just kind of get a medium tone. And again, just patiently going through and cleaning up the lines. Uh, the ones that I think are not attractive or they're flowing in the wrong direction, you know, like there's an intersection I don't like of lines. What I'm looking for out of the hair is this flowing organic waterfall. Um, if you've ever been lucky enough to see uh, beautiful thick long hair uh, that flows and cascades, it's uh, it has an organic uh, property to the way it falls and cascades. I don't know how you're ever gonna get that right or figure that out because it is not polite to stare. <laughs> uh, so maybe you should just take my word for it. Uh, I actually have spent more time trying to figure it out by myself than I have ever tried looking at somebody's uh, beautiful hair. Uh, I'm very self-conscious about not looking or staring at people. Um, I don't want to be that creepy guy. They don't know if you're an artist who's appreciating something uh, good or if you're just a creep. So um, I guess this is what photography is for and, or, or um, somebody who trusts you and doesn't mind you looking at them. It's a very touchy subject, isn't it? Of course, there's always photography and reference materials. But if you want to get into your own world with hair, uh, something like that. It's like drawing uh, flowers and vines and things like that. You need to know what the real stuff looks like, but when it comes to art, you need to go to your own world with it, you know? Okay, now we're to the HB, and now we're getting into the lighter tone where I just lightly brush the paper to get these softer grays. And they don't seem very dynamic as I'm making them, but they add up. Because right now, all this face is a lot of white space. And I'm hoping that the camera catches this, that these gray tones are delicate, and they're there if you're standing right in front of the drawing, and you can really see them. It makes the drawing have a more very delicate tones. Even there at the corner of the mouth. And then, of course, a, a little stronger in the hair. I'll go back to the 2B so that I can get uh, stronger depth tones in the hair. Everything that's not being hit by the light on top or to the side. And then you can go in and get various areas of the hair, like a strand or a lock, just the same way that uh, somebody would go get their hair streaked and colored so that there are highlights in there. That's basically what I'm doing. I'm basically doing her hair and putting in the highlights, you know. I don't know anything about how to do that in the beauty salon, but that's kind of what I'm doing here. See what I just did? It kept her from having a fatter lower jaw and I sharpened that jawline, and it looks a lot more like Kachu that way. Uh, that is the opposite of what I would do with Francine. 
on Francine, we definitely go for um, that soft jawline underneath. Okay, I think I'm kind of done with the drawing of Kachu, and I'm going to put the cameo circle behind her because it just kind of makes her pop. Again, the, the old joy, joke about the coin, but I think it looks pretty. So signing it is the last thing I do with a drawing. Flip this over and use the cardboard back as my cutting board. Always put your ruler on the art side, protect your art when you cut so that the blade doesn't catch and stray into the art. And now I have a 9 by 12 drawing of Kachu and you watched it happen from scratch. So I'm really looking forward to talking with you guys next weekend live and have a good week and I'll see you there.